Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, 100 Responses. We recently celebrated our 100th episode of this Human Meme podcast. I thank you for your participation and encouragement. Without you and your feedback and your engaged mind, there isn't a reason for this being. Ah, memeing. The hundred episode was a fun accomplishment, filled with ranging and rage-filled snippets of thought, and in the mix of it all, I invited email responses, and I received some wonderful commentary in return. Today, we'll share and respond to those moments of feedback. And to refresh your recollection, or to include you in case this is your first human meme podcast experience, here now is that hundred podcast in rerun. And don't worry, it's only a minute and 41 seconds, but its effects last forever. Welcome. This is David Ball's Human Meme. Today's topic. Hundred. Out of many. One. Concentric. Circular. Reference. We will not be moved. Is it the same or is it different? What do you see? What do you know? Do you see that I don't know? Have you figured it out yet? Sisyphus with a platypus. I've heard that before. I know what's going on. He's repeating himself. He's repeating himself. He's going around in circles. Always with intention. Never to deceive. Always to put us on the right path. Why? How is this happening? Have you you figured figured it out out yet? yet? What is the purpose? Are we listening? What is this for? Hundred. Closing circles. Four months. What do you know? What do you see? We will not be moved. Is this the same? Or is it different? What do you see? What do you know? Do you see that I don't know? We will not be moved. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme. Okay, so some thought that episode was loopy, a little weird, some thought it was odd. And okay, all of that, yes, because the responses we have indicate the effort was not unnoticed, and it was also understood and not lost. We start off our reactions with a Facebook comment from our old friend and collaborator and right father and good husband, Gordon Davidescu. Gordon was commenting on my annual Wikipedia donation, and Gordon intimately knows the long and sordid history we've had with dealing with false Wikipedia entries. When Gordon was writing for Go Inside Magazine, Urban Semiotic, editing my books, and all the other David Bowles blogs network stuff of writing that we did together over the years. And Gordon raises important questions about my Wikipedia page. And I did not create that page. I do not write for that page, edit, or manage that page. But I have been consulted for link permissions and things like that. And embedded in Gordon's friendly conversation is feedback on this human meme. Gordon says, Funnily enough, the Wikipedia entry for you is missing a lot of information. It doesn't even touch upon human meme, which right now is in my top five podcasts I regularly listen to. 
As someone who has read your words for over 15 years, it is always a pleasure to hear you say them, and as a side note, you sound even better than I imagined you would. My reply. Hey, Gordon. As I understand it, Wikipedia editors demand major third-party verification of events in order to be included in a page as a verifiable reference. That means something like a national newspaper, TV show, radio show, or some other verifiable source that preferably can be linked via a URL as evidence of life. So human meme, this podcast, would need to be covered in an interview with a major source or be featured in a media event or some other similar sort of verification of notability to get it mentioned on my Wikipedia page. And I do hope that will happen soon. Even with a long history of publication, it was tough to get Go Inside magazine and Urban Semiotic mentioned on my Wikipedia page because self-reference are not really acceptable as reliable third-party sources. So yes, there is tons of stuff missing on my page, and getting it all added takes more time and research and documentation to make it happen. I always appreciate your kind feedback about the podcast. It has taken a lot of work and extra effort to make it happen. And knowing there are smart minds out there connecting makes it all worthwhile. And so I say now, hey, if you're a major media publisher, or if you know someone who is, maybe you'll do a story on this Human Meme podcast. You could be in any country, any city, and you will help the cause of propagation and truth and memory. And it was certainly wonderful to still be in touch with Gordon and to touch in about interesting things that matter beyond reciprocal modern colloquialism. Now, let's share some of the feedback on that hundred podcast episode. Some letters have been edited and redacted for clarity. And yes, there were clues and hints and codex and reticles and a plenty of everything embedded in that hundred show. What did you catch? What did you throw? What do you know? Mary writes, Professor Bowles, it is so good to be in touch with you again and to see your face and to feel your voice. It's just like the old days in the classroom at Fordham University in the Bronx, where you were teaching us literature and criticism. Amazes me that a podcast can be just like sitting in a lecture hall with you all over again. Okay, so you asked in the podcast what I know, and I'll tell you. I know that the world is unfair. And as you taught us in class, What are you going to do about it? Since you've known me, I've graduated from Fordham. I went to law school, and I'm currently working with advocacy rights for disabled children. That's what I'm doing about it. That's what I know. And these children knew, long before I knew, that the world is unfair. They were born into it. They have to deal with it every day. And I would like to add that every day we have to stand up and make a difference. Every day. Thank you for your podcast. I'm telling all my friends about it. Keep up the good work. My reply. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate your good thoughts and wishes, and I admire the life choice you made to set a bright and righteous path forward into the world. We need you. We all need the all of you. That is what we know. Thanks to you. Peter says, Peter says, I'm writing about the podcast. I haven't listened to all yet, but I do remember hearing about the Sisyphus myth 
and then referring to sissy fuss with a pretty purse slipped into some shows. Not sure what that means, but I do know I heard in the 100 episode sissy fuss with a platypus. And then I'm really confused. What does it mean? Is it a clue? Or are you just messing with us? My reply. Those are good observations, Peter. And the Sisyphus myth has a lot of meaning in a current world where we may feel disengaging and death is better than life and suffering. Sisyphus and his rock are iconic. And sometimes we need to be re-reminded of what matters by invoking other connective memes like Sisyphus with a pretty purse or Sisyphus with a platypus to clue us in to the value of always listening and never presuming and to always be ready to change the how of what we think and what we think we know. Desdemona wrote, I'm new to your podcast, and after hearing The Hundred Show, I went back and listened to others. Not really in order, just random. The We Will Not Be Moved had a lot of meaning for me, especially in the episode about John Lewis. I think that's an excellent way of thinking. You can lean on us and shoot us and put us in jail, but that doesn't mean you moved any ground on us. We stand strong. We stand up to you. That's what I got out of it anyway. My reply. That is fine and insightful analysis, Desdemona. I think you're right on target that people can bully and threaten and win elections. But that doesn't mean any of us have been tricked into believing lies and deceptions. That doesn't mean if a gun is pointed at us that we need to point one back to prove a point or to take a stand. We will not be moved is a powerful mimetic that can lead us in times of war and in the perpetuation of peace. Thank you for listening. Be a human... Excuse me. Excuse me, Dave. Dave. Ah. Hey. Hey, Dave. Scooch over a little bit. What? A little more. <coughs> more. Ow. More there. Perfect. You're standing on my foot. Yes, it's me, Dave. Your favorite president-elect ghoul. Or gargoyle as some dim-witted podcasters might say. Hey Dave, I've been listening to all your episodes, even this one. And while I love the show, Dave, I just can't help but be a little disappointed that you haven't given me any credit for making this human meme thing such a great success. Big time. Sad. You're part of the crooked media, aren't you, Dave? I should consider you for Secretary of Homeland Insecurity. Right, Dave? You'd fit right in with all the neurotics over there. You're still my foot. Without me, there'd be no outrage or podcast topics, right, Dave? Without me, there would be joy in your heart and a little tea party in your soul. You're even using my voice in that hundred podcast. While imitation is flattery, Dave, you could have just invited me on the show instead of stealing my voice. Am I right? Make a ghoul great again. But I accept your apology, Dave. And you're welcome, Dave. And I'll be here watching and helping you, Dave, with the next hundred episodes and the next hundred after that and so on and etc. and all that stuff. 
No matter what you think, Dave, or where you are, I'll find you. Don't worry. Just shelter in place, and I'll be right there. Run, hide, fight. And with that, I'll close this for you, Dave. Since it looks like you've fallen for all the heavy in me. Thank you for listening. Be a human me.